Yeah, I'll start. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So welcome back everybody, um, I have with me again Carly Fowler and myself Rory Canavan. We are going to uh, wax lyrical for 10 minutes on the joys of tackling software asset management as a uh, management system standard. So, uh, and adopting a, a management framework, whether you go down the ISO route or whether you go down a sort of customised own version of your own route or whatever. Um, and Kylie, what, start of a 10, mm. what, are the, uh, what are the advantages do you think? So, actually, can we take a step back? I think we need to define what a management system is. Okay. So a management system is where you need to control the interaction of processes to achieve outcomes. Yes. 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 Any good SAM framework worth its salt will not operate in silos. There's nothing worse. There's yeah. nothing worse. So yeah. um, you've got to, I think, Look at the entities that form the the act or form around the. Uh, I don't know if I'm saying this right. Okay, I'm probably not, so we'll probably have to edit this. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Look at the um, the entities that uh, comprise your software asset management system and then look at their respective life cycles. So you'll have a respective life cycle around your request, around your purchase, around your installation, and that will then flush out the activities. Uh, i.e. the processes that are needed to manage them uh, through their respective life cycles. And I think for many organisations those life cycles are actually embodied in what we call processes themselves but again themselves are quite complicated activities and they're not owned by a software asset manager in many cases they're owned by somebody else often within the service management team so a great example for instance is change management or request fulfilment. We are merely COGS providing software to an end user, but the request fulfillment process, that bigger request fulfillment process, also provides access to files. It provides access to services. It provides access to, uh, to hardware. So anything that an end user needs, for instance, or even a project or whoever needs it, they will put that through the request fulfillment process. And the management of software, so the delivery of software, to fulfill that request is actually only one of many things that that process is also doing. So this is why what we need to do is think about not so much uh, what we're doing, how we turn the handle to produce outputs, that's the definition of a process, that's not what we're doing. What we are doing is we are working with a load of other people who are operating their own processes to make sure that they do their processes in the way which achieves the outcomes that we want to achieve as an organisation. I think you're very optimistic relying on projects to actually use the request fulfillment process. But well, you know what, I mean, but projects are still requesting stuff, aren't they? So you've got, so so in fact, if you were to say, right, all we want to do is focus on end user requests, that that's coming in through our service desk tool, you're going to miss a massive amount of software that's being requested and deployed through projects. Yeah. So this is why we're saying that actually it's the, what we're doing is management system owners is managing processes and the interaction of processes in order to produce the outcomes that we need mm -hmm. rather than actually performing the processes themselves which isn't to say that there aren't some processes that that software asset managers genuinely own and mm -hmm. that we are within our power to drive and you know we, we turn the handle and we produce the output but actually doing software asset management well requires you to implement a management system which controls and influences what a load of different processes are doing, what a load of different stakeholders are doing. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure that all the, that the tools that are, that are involved in the management system are all, again, uh, are producing work in such a way that they produce the outcomes that you need. Otherwise, you're not going to succeed. Yeah. And, and if you don't have that system in place, you are never, never going to get strategic either. Or if you are, it's going to be a, a sheer fluke. Mm. Because once you have those um, operational KPIs producing data to say this process is working well or this process is working badly, that's when you can start to say, well, this potentially supports an IT or business outcome that supports an IT or business strategy. Mm. And that's where you've got the well-honed machine that can be SAM supporting the business and, and driving value for money. Yeah. So I think, of course, that begs the question, what outcomes? What are outcomes? What is it that we're trying to achieve? And I think that is highly dependent on your own organisation. If you think about it, there is always, I mean, the most common outcomes related to software asset management are the management of compliance, control of costs, mm -hmm. 
and providing a service to our organisation so that our service has safe software that it can use. It, it gets the software it needs, that software is safe, that software is managed appropriately. So if we think about those as a triangle, all of those three things trade off, mm -hmm. don't they? If we want to have very, very high levels of service for our end users and our programs and our projects, then that has is quite expensive. So that c contradicts our goal of potentially minimising costs. If we want to maintain software compliance, that's really administratively heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be quite a slow process. So that might impact our ability to provide a service and to provide soft to deploy software in a timely manner if we're if we're really focused on making sure that we're compliant. It also being compliant also can potentially increase costs because if you don't want because you either have the administrative burden mm -hmm. of, folk, of of you know dotting the i's and crossing the t's with everything in terms of compliance or you're playing it safe and potentially spending more money than you need to on the software just to, to avoid the risk that you, that you become non-compliant. So you've got to understand what the outcomes are that your organisation wants, but then also understand how they prioritise them because, all the, because those trade-offs are very, very real. Mm -hmm. you, you see that too in, uh, in a lot of organisations that have gone down the service management route where essentially getting um, IT services, getting hardware, getting software over the fence and to the client and we don't care at what cost or, or to what manner or standard uh, because we're honouring SLAs, <coughs> excuse me, um, is is prevalent mm. and and they're the typically they're the companies that suffer really badly from a SAM from a compliance point mm. of view. Yeah, or they're the ones where they'll have the software asset manager uh, absolutely checking compliance for absolutely everything, and and then the service managers are complaining about how long, or the business is complaining about how long it takes to get software. So it is. It is really important not just to understand what the outcomes are that you want, but also to understand the priorities because you do need to communicate to your organisation what those trade offs are. Yeah, and I think too we should off our caps in the direction of um, information security and data management and also mm -hmm. uh, business continuity management and disaster recovery, also. Mm -hmm. So um, it's Quite appropriate that we're talking in these these times around um, BCM and DR around coronavirus. Mm -hmm. It's very topical, very relevant. Increasingly mm -hmm. now, we're going to see. I'm sure as this this video comes out, by the time it comes out, hopefully the worst will be over already. But um, people are going to be working from home. So, have you got the networks in place? Have you got the the bandwidth for people to be dialing in and using the, all the comms tools that they need to use in lieu of coming into the office on a daily basis? Yeah. So, so I guess the summary is, software asset management is about, oh, successful software asset management is about building a management system, and what that management system does is it, is it manages the interaction of people, tools, but most of all processes, in order to achieve the outcomes that we want. Yeah. And the outcomes are what your organisation wants to achieve, but a lot of organisations hide or, or sort of push under the carpet the fact that a lot of what they want to achieve from the software asset management contradicts each other. There are trade-offs between them and so it's not just enough to say we want this, 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 this and this. You really need to be very clear what your organisation prioritises so that you can um, work with everybody else and the processes and the tools to make sure that you're actually achieving the, what is your organisation's genuine priorities. Yeah. And one of my, my pet hates around SAM as well are those organisations that um, see or view SAM as an ELP generation machine, um, get to a compliance position with a given vendor, and then try and have to reverse engineer a red or black figure at the bottom of a report to understand why it is red or black or why it's as awful as it is. You, you build up to something like that and then you can chip away at it once you know what processes are supporting the generation of that report, uh, and you refine the data and you get the report better, as opposed to working backwards and, and charging headlong into generating a compliance report. Mm. Yes, I think, I think that's a really great uh, point because software asset management needs to take a holistic view. You need to be really clear about your scope and you need to um, be very clear that a report or an effective license position, that's not an outcome, that is an output of a specific process but actually the outcome that your organisation wants is to be compliant or it wants to have control costs. The fact that you have an effective licence position sitting in front of you is irrelevant unless you do something with it. Yeah. Mm. And the way to do something with it is to really start thinking about, well, 
if we've got a red figure at the bottom of our ELP, what's caused that red figure? What are the processes that are not producing outputs aligned to our outcomes? So you then need to go around this circle of process improvement. So I think that's probably it, really. I think we're allowed 10 minutes stop as well. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So software asset management is a management system. Yeah, not a process. Not a process.